Don't you just hate it when a dehydrating project goes wrong? Well, that's not what I hoped would happen. Even the most experienced dehydrators often have projects that go through their machine that don't come out the way they expected. But that doesn't mean that there aren't fixes to redeem those mistakes. Let's see how my oops with dehydrating frozen fruit can help you be more successful in your dehydrating projects in the future. March is National Frozen Foods Month. And why is this important? The work is already done for you. It's already prepped, blanched, cut, and ready to just throw in your dehydrator and go. Now, typically with vegetables, I would say just do that. But with fruit, there may be a few more things that you want to look at before you, before you start drying them. So let's get started. The thing about doing frozen fruits is that this, the freezer breaks down the cellular, cellular, let me try that again. The freezer breaks down the cellular can I say that word? I cannot. It breaks down the structure of the cells in the fruit so that as it thaws, it's going to release a ton of moisture. So we're protecting our trays with fruit leather sheets. I'm also protecting the bottom of my machine with a fruit leather tray that comes with it. Uh, you can put parchment paper down. You can use whatever you need to. Uh, but you want to protect your machine because the likelihood that these are going to release a lot of moisture is going to happen. You also want to use these sheets because you don't want this fruit to stick to your trays, whether you're using a metal tray or a plastic tray, this stuff will. So here's how we're going to do this. I'm loading trays with samples of all of the different fruits that we have here. So the first one is going to be raspberries and with some whole strawberries, with some pineapple chunks, and then with some sliced bananas and a little bit of the mixed fruit. On our next tray, we're going to do the raspberries, the grapes, some sliced strawberries, and some blueberries. These are the frozen that are going to go into the dehydrator first. Typically, you would do fruit at 135F, 57C. We're going to judge this basically by how they react to the temperature. Sometimes you may have to drop the temperature if they look like they're getting a little overheated. Uh, the temperature, we're going to leave at about 131. Time, we're sticking way up there because these are going to take a while to do, especially those big strawberries. We want it to have all the time in the world and not have to worry about time. Let's get started. Now, what am I gonna do with the rest of this fruit? Most of it is gonna go into the refrigerator to thaw. Then with these raspberries, I'm gonna go ahead and take these out into a colander and let them dry and let them thaw in the colander and then the juice will just go into a bowl down below it. A change of mind, this is how I'm doing it. This is gonna be my mixed fruit bowl. Uh, then I'm gonna let this just thaw down together. I'll show you how it releases all the juice on the bottom at the end. So here we go. This is gonna go into the refrigerator just like this. Then I'm gonna seal these up and let these thaw within their own bag. And that way any juice they release are, is gonna be captured inside the bag and not leak in my refrigerator. All right, a quick check-in. This is what things look like now, where I'm talking about the juice that we were doing before. There's the blueberry, there's the strawberry, then more whole strawberry juice. So this didn't make too much, so as long as you have these uh, trays on, I mean, sheets on your trays, that should protect your machine mostly. Uh, but that's why we warn about doing frozen vegetable, I mean, frozen fruit, and to protect your tray, your machine. Okay, we've had these drying for close to 24 hours, and they're not ready. Right here, you'll see how we have this little stash of bananas. We can actually flip them over to make sure that the undersides are done. And what you're seeing here is not some weird film. It's just the sugar that came out of the bananas as they thawed. So we have, this is what they look like on the underside. You want to flip your fruit when you are doing it on any kind of surface like this to make sure that they get a chance to dry on the underside. The same here with the strawberries. If you pick them up, you can see they are still quite wet, but we want to flip them to make sure they have time to dry everywhere. We'll do that. And then on our next sheet, this is what it's looking like. Our strawberries that were sliced. This is the, the sugars on the outside of it there. Just flip these over to make sure they get time to dry on both sides. The cherries are still nowhere near done. The blueberries, what you can do, is you can make sure that you go through here and press them to make sure they have an opening here. I don't know if you can see that. And as they thaw in the dehydrating process, that skin breaks down and they should break on their own. But you might find that some didn't. So just poke on them, push them down, and you can see where it breaks, okay? All right, so overnight, I let this fruit sit just so it could 
release whatever juice it was going to release and we have about that much in the bottom of the bowl not a ton and if you played your cards right you saw how there is no lot of seepage as long as you protect your trays it's not going to get all over your machine uh, but there's that and then what we have are these bags now one of these bags i did not close properly and it looks like it was the pineapple uh, I didn't get them properly closed, and so the juice, and they, this one was laying down, so this juice is all over my refrigerator. The bananas also will have released a ton of juice, as we saw on the trays. You can see right here, that's, you know, the water that came from frozen. I don't know, can you see that? Yeah, there you go. There's a lot of that juice there. So this is why we stress that when you're going from frozen, you want to make sure that you protect your machine, because there is that. So we're going to load a few of these trays up in the same fashion that we did our other. Now, at this point, if you wanted to, you could cut the larger pieces of fruit up here. In fact, they would do much better if you cut that up a little bit. But I said we're going to do them whole so you can see how they work. So let me go toss this in a dehydrator. So here's a question I know someone's going to ask. It's okay to put something in a dehydrator when something else has been drying for a while? Typically, if you had a perfect situation, no, you don't want to introduce new product into a machine that's already been drying something for a while. The reasoning is, is that you don't want to introduce all that new moisture that's going to take everything much longer to dry than if you had done them separately. Now, practically, you may have a lot of things that you need to process through and some things are taking a little less time, some things are taking more, you've got extra space, you need to go ahead and do that. It's, it's, it's not that it's a quality issue, it's not that it's a safety issue, it's a practical issue. Now here we're going to take all of those leftover pieces of fruit that we put in the colander yesterday to get rid of all of the juice that we could. And what do you do with frozen fruit? To me, the best thing, making fruit leather. Can you put everything in there? You betcha. Um, you can put all, anything that you want in here will work just fine. This makes it go really quickly. All right, that was a quick and easy way to make some fruit leather puree that you can now pour out onto your trays in order to make fruit leather. Of course, when I wanna show you all the cool things, I forgot to hit record. So I'm gonna kind of run through this really quickly. What I did is I took the puree that I had and I poured some into this tray. Now this happens to be a tray from Bright Kitchen. It's a silicone tray that has the slip. They make these for circular machines. They make them for rectangular machines. They make them for square. And they're, they're handy for doing something like this for a lot of you. So I poured it all out here. And then I took an offset spatula just like this and just kind of ran it through to make sure everything was pretty even. And then I noticed that my, my puree is a little on the thin side. Uh, it is a little runny, and if you run into this, here are a couple things that you can do. You can either uh, pour out a test bit, see what it's doing, and if you need to add some applesauce to it, add some applesauce. I don't have a good uh, measurement for you. You just kind of play it by ear, add some to it, get a little thick, and it's good. Or you can say, okay, I know this is really thin. I'm going to put it into a saucepan and let it simmer on the stovetop for a little while. It helps get rid of some of the excess moisture. Yours may have had a lot of water in it because it was frozen. It may still contain a lot of extra water. Uh, and it also helps develop whatever natural pectin is in that fruit. F fruits like apples have a lot of pectin. Most of the fruit that is in here, I think mangoes also do as well. But a lot of the fruits that are in here do not have a lot of natural pectin. So this may be a little thinner because of that and the simmering could help. So what happens if you don't have this tray? I'll show you what I did. Here is a hack that I use if I need a tray. I will take my regular fruit leather sheet. Where I have this corner here, all I'm gonna do 
is just kind of folded in on itself just like that. And I take a paper clip. You can use a bulldog clip or whatever else. If you've got parchment paper, you can use staple, a stapler. And I just fold up the edges and it creates a tray. So fruit leather like this should take anywhere from four to seven, maybe eight hours, depending on your machine, your humidity, the thickness and the density of your fruit leather. Make sure to check it after about three hours. If you can lift it up and flip it over, that's always a great benefit to help it dry a little more thoroughly. But if you can't, just let it dry, it's gonna dry. All right, so here we are the next morning. We have things that are drying. Raspberries are still can see this the raspberries still aren't anywhere near ready being dried these are the thawed raspberries and they're losing all consistency of their fruit whereas the from oops that's not the right tray here is the these are straight from frozen and they are holding their shape but the thawed ones are not as a kid did you ever do those glue projects where you put a bunch of glue on the on the the table put stuff in it let it dry that's what this is reminding me of remember this is just the sugars uh, that came out from the banana our bananas from frozen I meant from thawed much less of that moisture because we let that all go in the beginning and then here are our strawberries okay so let's talk about when the timer goes off and your things aren't ready I cannot stress enough that timer means nothing more than your machine has turned off. Use it as a guide only. It's not meant to tell you your food is dry because your home's humidity today, I don't know if you can see that outside or the window, it's raining like crazy, which means my home's humidity is going to have been increased, meaning that the machine is pulling in humidity in order to take out humidity and that humidity is going into saturated air. So it takes longer to dry things. How you prepared your food is going to matter about how it takes, how long it takes to dry things. Uh, your machine machine, how powerful it is, how efficient it is. All of those things play into the time that it takes. Do not rely on the timer. As with this, some of these things have been drying for now. Today's the third day and they're still not quite dry, but I'm going to show you why, because I told you in the beginning, we're drying straight out of the bag. I didn't do much preparation at all on these, but wanted you to see exactly how it worked if you did that. So let me give you some tips here. When you're in the machine and you've already done things and you realize, oh gosh, these still aren't dry after all this time, what can I do to help them? Let's take our whole strawberries here. These strawberries are uh, spongy. If you break it open, you can see that it's still not dry inside. Uh, you'll have found that with the cherries back here. Uh, even the blueberries here are not dry. These are the original cherries from the first day we started this project. So what you can do is if you're in the middle of this and you find that things just aren't drying, if you didn't do this beforehand, do it now. Go through here and just take some shears. Uh, I've got my kitchen shears and I'm cutting these things open because these cherries are simply not going to be done within the next two days probably. It's going to take them a long time. Uh, so just go through and cut them open. You're going to have smaller cherry raisins. Let me get this better right here. You could do this with a knife on a cutting board. I'm just trying to do this one-handed while we're still in the process. Cut them up, get them smaller, open up all of that inner space so that the moisture can escape, escape from the fruit. Same thing here with the blueberries. They, let me get out of the light. Uh, the blueberries need to be broken because they are still full. I can go through here and just clip the uh, skin I don't necessarily have to break them all in half, but you want to do something to break that skin to let that moisture go. Same here with these strawberries. They're not going to be done anytime soon. I'm just going to open them up and make strawberry raisins just like this and give them more space to open and release that moisture. So that's what you do to fix the fail of things taking forever to dry. It's not a fail. Um, I, I need to rephrase that. It's not a fail, but things didn't work the way you expected. So here's a couple of fixes that you can do. Okay, so what do we have here is some over-dried fruit leather. Does that mean it's not any good? It never means it's not any good. You can still use it. So a tip I have, and I've already started this, and I'll show you how it works, is when you're trying to pull out fruit leather that is sticking to whatever sheet that you have. If you've used parchment paper, and this, if I had used parchment paper on this, the parchment paper would have used soaked up a lot of that moisture from the fruit leather and things would have stuck hard. Uh, I'm using the silicone tray, but things can still stick to it. It's not stick proof. It's just, it helps not stick so much. So I've got this really dried fruit leather that as I'm trying to pull it up, it can break. 
When you put the pressure on pulling this up, it's putting all the pressure on your fruit leather, which might make it break more than you intend. A trick, and it seems weird, but it does work, is that you pull the silicone away from the fruit leather. That way, very little pressure is being put on the fruit leather. It's still gonna, it still may tear, but you're taking this, this is where all the pressure is going, and you're just holding the fruit leather intact. So we can pull it up. It's still gonna tear a little bit on the edges because that's where it dried the most. We're gonna make do with what we can. And we are going to redeem this fruit leather. All right. So instead of having a perfectly pretty roll up like the things that you get from the store, you still have some of this fruit leather that will roll. I mean, it will roll fine and you can still use it. But what we tend to do is just make chunks and keep it like this and then just store it this way because this is easier than rolling it all up. Uh, but I know the roll up idea is really cute and fun for everybody, but we find this is fine. Now, can you do fruit leather to the point that it's brittle and can you still eat it? You certainly can. Our family actually tends to like that better because it doesn't get stuck in our teeth the same way that this does. So there's how you can save this. And if it's not the perfect roll up, it's okay. It's still good. Everybody's gonna still enjoy it. All right, now for our, our next fruit leather, we're gonna do this one. And just like before, as you're prying this off, this one's gonna come off pretty easily because I like this parchment, I mean, this uh, fruit leather sheet better than anything that I use. And you can see that it's shiny on the bottom and that's fine, but what you're looking for is if this is still kind of moist on the bottom, flip it over and give it another hour or so to go back in the machine and dry. What I'm looking at is trying to help you learn how to redeem a fruit leather that gets too dry. Okay, so here's some tips about fruit leather that you're working with that is just too brittle, or it's just, it's not as soft as you wanted it to be. What can you do? All right, this fruit leather is really pliable. I can roll it, I can tear it, I can do whatever I need to for storage. This is great, okay? Yes, it's got this big tear in the middle, but that's just an aesthetic thing. It's not affecting anything. But if this was harder, if this was a little too hard for me, what would I do to help redeem this? Walk away. Just leave it on the countertop. If you need to cover it with something to keep dust and anything else off the top of it, you can do that, a paper towel or whatever. But leaving it on your countertop for a little while covered uh, will allow it to absorb whatever humidity is in your air. If you live in a place that's really humid right now, it will take no time at all for this to start reabsorbing that moisture and get soft again. If you live in a very arid environment or just want this to happen a little faster, take a piece of paper towel, uh, barely damp, don't soak it. Just get it a little damp, put it inside any baggie or plastic container of your choice, glass, whatever, just a container. You can then put some of your fruit leather in here with this, close it up, and it's going to absorb that moisture. So you don't wanna leave it like this forever because then things can mold. It's a little too much moisture to store this way, but it's a way to help regenerate some of the moisture in your fruit leather to make it a little more pliable if that's what you prefer. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the project and how it's worked out. I just wanna go through all of the, the trays so that you understand what happened and what we can do about it and then how we take care of it. All right, this is the tray of previously thawed fruit that then we dehydrated. Um, this has been going for about 24 hours. It's gonna need more time. The raspberries are still just not holding any kind of shape. They're gonna take a long time to dry. You can see there's still moisture coming out of my fingers. The blueberries are also exactly the same way the cherries. A lot of times fruit will take 24 to 48 hours to dry, depending on all the factors that we talked about earlier. But I have some pieces that are obviously dry and ready to go. So we can store, we can go ahead and take out those pieces that are dry. And then what we can do is for the rest of these that aren't dry, put them back in the dehydrator and let them have some more time. All right, so what do you do with this next? Now you've got all of your stuff dried. You've done your fruit leather, you've done your fruit. What do you do with this? First of all, before we do anything else, we're gonna put this in a jar with an airtight uh, airtight seal, whether you use a canning jar, whether you use a, an old spaghetti jar, uh, no matter what you use, you wanna make sure that this is airtight, so no air exchanges between the two. It's not the same as vacuum sealed, we don't want that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna spend the next week next five days doing this. And what we're looking for is clumping and sticking or any kind of mold formation. Now here's, I'm gonna be able to show you this immediately off the bat. Do you see how this is sticking at the top? You see some stuff sticking there. 
And if I can get it to do it again, no, it's not going to do it again. Okay. So what you're looking for are things sticking to the top. Now, when you do these, because of all of the sugar content from thawing and things like that, they're going to be more sugary and sugar is hygroscopic, which means it likes to absorb that moisture. It attracts moisture like crazy. So something that you may have are things sticking to the top that are from compaction, which means that the pressure of this stuff putting down onto the bottom of the jar, when you flip it over, those things that were really sugary are going to stick to the top. If you shake it and they come off, you're good. If you shake it and they don't come off, likely this needs to go back into the dehydrator, dry a little bit more before you do this again. So once you've conditioned, how do you use this? In a trail mix, in a in oatmeal, uh, in snacking just by itself, like snack packs for your kids for their school lunches. This will last you about a year, maybe longer, depending. Your mileage may vary. Now, if you want to see how I take advantage of other frozen foods uh, to stock my pantry quickly, check out this video on how I dehydrate frozen vegetables. And until I see you again next time, happy dehydrating.